Expert offers two types of rear suspension. A conventional system with steel springs and a new air spring system which provides an automatic rear ride height correction function. The pneumatic springs not only provide an excellent performance when the vehicle is loaded, but also ensure a comfortable ride when the vehicle is empty. No matter what the weight of the vehicle payload, this system automatically maintains the optimum vehicle body height for the specific driving conditions. It also maintains a constant overall height at the rear of the vehicle. In addition, this air suspension system may be fitted with a function to raise or lower the vehicle sill height when the vehicle is stationary so that it can be adjusted to the same height as a loading bay, for example. In this program, we will first of all describe the air suspension system architecture. Then we'll look in detail at the components specific to this system. Then we'll explain how it operates and how it's used. And to finish, we will give a description of specific operations to be carried out. The air suspension is also referred to as the CAAR system, Rear Ride Height Leveling System. The principal components of the system are a compressor, two pneumatic springs, two body height sensors, and depending on the equipment level, an air reserve. The system is controlled by the CAAR ECU located in the engine compartment. Two air suspension springs are located on the rear axle, as are two traditional hydraulic shock absorbers. The compressor is placed under the floor on the left-hand side. Two grey and black pipes link the compressor to the springs. The air intake and outlet pipe has a filter located in the rear left-hand wheel arch. The air is sucked into the passenger compartment. The rear body height data is supplied to the ECU by two height sensors. These sensors are secured to the body and linked to the rear axle arms. An inhibit button serves to override the system. A buzzer located at the rear left hand side indicates any change of status of the inhibit button. If the CAM, the Manual Ride Height Leveling System option, has been selected, the system also has an air reserve located under the floor pan on the right hand. Its tube, a pressure sensor integrated in the suspension compressor, and a control button. The buzzer is activated when maneuvering in manual mode. The nominal ride height, the pneumatic springs contain 2.5 liters of air. The internal pressure is on average 4 bar. The suspension compressor is driven by an electric motor that is thermally protected by a temperature sensor. 
The compressor mechanism operates in an oil-free casing and the connecting rod bearing is lubricated for life. The piston has a Teflon piston ring. The compressor includes three solenoids, one for each spring and a third on the outlet circuit. If the system employs the air reserve, the compressor contains a fourth solenoid plus a pressure sensor. There is also a lock valve and an air outlet flow limiter. A desiccator absorbs the compressed air moisture. O-rings are used to seal the pipe couplings. The air reserve contains 5 litres and operates at an internal pressure of approximately 15 bar. It incorporates an internal protective valve. The ECU controls the system. It receives hardwired data concerning the left hand and right hand body heights, circuit pressure, compressor temperature, system inhibit requests and manual requests to raise or lower the vehicle. It activates the compressor, the solenoids, the buzzer and the inhibit switch light by a hardwired signal. Via the CANIS multiplex network, it receives data indicating the status of the brake pedal switch and the status of the vehicle openings. It also receives the engine running data, engine speed, vehicle speed, ESP operating data, economy mode, and requests a partial or full system wake up. It transmits the following data. CAAR system fault and movement underway. When the vehicle is unlocked or locked, or when an opening changes status, the BSI orders the CAAR ECU to wake up if it is not already in wake-up mode and transmits the change of status to it. The ECU is informed of the body height on each side of the vehicle by the sensors. If the body height measured is outside the nominal range, the ECU carries out a correction. To raise the body height, the ECU activates the compressor, then opens the air spring solenoids until the nominal body height is reached. The air reserve, if present, is not used for this operation. It is only used for raising the vehicle in manual mode. Conversely, to lower the vehicle, it opens the spring solenoids and the outlet solenoid. Automatic correction can only be activated if all the vehicle openings are closed. When the ignition is turned on, the light on the instrument cluster is extinguished to confirm that the system is operating correctly. Via the driving aids comfort, air suspension, the parameter measurements, and system status data menus, the maintenance tool can be used to check the correct positions. System operation is neutralized if a vehicle opening is open, if brake pedal activation is detected, or in the event of sharp lateral or longitudinal acceleration when the vehicle is moving. This information is provided by the brake ECU. A light on the instrument cluster flashes 
to indicate that the rear suspension is out of the nominal operational range. A permanently lit light indicates a major system fault. In addition, 30 minutes after the plus APC has been turned off, the CAAR ECU carries out a ride height correction if necessary and if the system has not been inhibited. It continues to monitor the rear body height for 72 hours. It activates a correction if necessary once it has checked the battery voltage. It is essential to inhibit the automatic correction function by a long press on the inhibit switch before changing a wheel, before carrying out any work under the vehicle, or when the vehicle is being transported. To quit inhibit mode and move back into automatic correction mode, press on the switch again for two seconds or drive for a few moments at low speed above 10 kilometers an hour. In the event of loss of data related to the openings, the left and right hand body heights, the automatic correction function is disabled. Similarly, the function is disabled if there is an ECU fault or the compressor temperature is too high. In the event of a compressor motor or solenoid fault, the vehicle is placed at the reference ride height, if this is possible, prior to the system being disabled. The manual ride height correction function enables the user to adjust the vehicle sill height. With the vehicle stationary, the user must open the rear door before activating the raise lower switch. The series of beep sounds throughout the maneuver. Three beeps indicate that the upper or lower position or the reference ride height position has been attained. Via the driving aids comfort, air suspension, then parameter measurements and system status data menus, the maintenance tool can be used to check the correct positions. If three beeps sound when the user is pressing the control, this indicates that it is impossible to carry out the maneuver requested. If the vehicle is in economy mode, or if the brake pedal is activated, the raise lower command is disabled. By pressing briefly on the switch in the opposite direction to the load height position, it is possible to pass into automatic correction mode and to automatically position the vehicle in its reference ride height position. As soon as the vehicle speed exceeds 10 kilometers an hour, the system moves into automatic correction mode. If any intervention has to be carried out on the pneumatic part of the rear suspension, it is important to comply with the special safety rules indicated in the repair methods due to the high pressure in the system. Prior to lifting the vehicle, it is essential to inhibit the air suspension system. Before any intervention, clean the system carefully with the recommended degreasing solution. Leak detection is affected using a conventional bubble generation product. A special tool has been developed to remove the pipes. It is essential to use this tool. When you press on the ring, the tool releases the pipe retaining claw.
The parts removed must be rubbed down with the cleaning kit and stored in a dust-free environment. The springs are changed by pairs. The vehicle must be placed on its wheels on a flat surface. Connect the maintenance tool. Using the driving aid comfort and then air suspension menus, depressurize the springs. The operation takes around three minutes. Switch off the ignition. And making sure to observe the repair methods, disconnect the battery. Place the rear of the vehicle on axle stands. Bear in mind that when the system has been depressurized, special supports are used if necessary to replace the vehicle on its wheels without damaging the pneumatic springs. Then attach the red triangle which indicates the state of the rear suspension. Once the area of operation has been cleaned, uncouple the pipe. Rub down the spring and the pipe. Remove the lower part from the spring and by rotating a quarter turn clockwise, as seen from above, remove the spring. During the operation avoid twisting or vertically bending the spring which would destroy it. If the spring has to be stored, check that the membrane is correctly rolled round the lower piston. This check must also be carried out before the spring is refitted. The spring contains marks to indicate the body side and the cross member side. Position the spring on the upper mount by rotating it anti-clockwise a quarter turn. Check once more that the membrane is rolled round the lower piston. The air inlet must be at the rear. Check the position of the lower section. Remove the plugs. Connect the pipe. An overmolding is used to ensure that the end pieces grip correctly. A double marking system ensures that the assembly is correctly clipped together. When the spring has been refitted, only one mark should be visible. Reconnect the battery. Using the air suspension menu, inflate the springs. The inflation operation is always carried out with the wheels hanging. The operation starts with the right-hand spring. There are three filling stages. After the first stage, look under the vehicle to check that the operation is being conducted correctly. Carry out the second and third stages. Proceed in the same fashion for the left-hand spring.
slowly replace the vehicle on its wheels. Close all the openings and carry out a fault reading. Using the parameter measurement menu, check that the rear body height is correct. Crank up the engine and check that the indicator light on the instrument cluster goes out. Following any intervention on a rear suspension component or after replacing the ECU, it is essential to carry out a vehicle reference attitude learning program. This is measured by taking the difference between the body height and the wheel axis. Place the measurement gauge on the wheel bolt heads. On the left hand side, measure the height of the wheel axis. then the body height. Carry out the same operations on the right hand side. On each side calculate the differences in height in millimeters. Using the height learning menu, enter the values found on the right hand side, and then on the left hand side. Close all the openings, and using the parameter measurements menu, Check that the rear body position is correct. Crank up the engine and check that the indicator light on the instrument cluster goes out. The compressor has two spare part reference numbers, depending on whether it includes the manual correction function or not. It is delivered with its mount and flexible joints. It is essential that these are not separated. During any intervention, be careful never to disconnect the air reserve pipe from the compressor side. Always start with the air reserve side as the safety valve prevents the air from being entirely drawn from the reserve. The maintenance tool is used to depressurize the reserve. If the reserve is replaced, use the special tool to carry out a preliminary air charge. Never use the CAAR system compressor for this operation. This new air suspension system provides excellent driving comfort no matter what payload is on board.